Good afternoon, everyone. As always, ever-present signs of climate change in the past when it was much warmer than today. Also, the IPCC, the cloud process, uncertain of the changes in the climate system because of clouds, which means them not able to explain Antarctica gains greater than losses. They're confused somehow in the cloud circulation pattern that's increasing ice on Antarctica. And when we look at the Southern Hemisphere ice area, you don't see anything out of the ordinary even in 2017. Global ice conditions for you, as well aerial farms, vertical farming in cities, in disuse factories, that's 130 times more productive than field farming. And while you're watching the video, please remember to subscribe to Adapt 2030 and join me on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Stitcher Radio for my newest podcast episode with Jeff Raymond, The Real Martian. The Mendenhall Glacier receding, unearthing stumps and root structures of previous forests in the exact same area, meaning that it had to be warmer prior in our past that's now covered in glaciers. And the most recent stumps are only 1,400 years old. So how much warmer was it back then than it is today, even without factories, even without our cars? Also, another perplexing question for NASA and IPCC, why is Antarctica's ice sheet growing, even though they say it's global warming? I'll bring you back to the same NASA article here showing you where the ice gains are on Antarctica. The active volcanoes underwater are melting some of the ice sheet off of the Larsen A, B, and C ice shelves, where it says AP29, top left. They're using the LIDAR satellites, but they're finding that the snowpack and ice is actually gaining over the central part of Antarctica. The only places they're really losses are some of the sea ice where the underwater active volcanoes are. And the IPCC, a dominant source of uncertainty is this cloud process surrounding Antarctica. They can't get a good gauge on the climate system because in this feedback loop they expected it to lose ice but now it's gaining ice complete opposite of what they were saying would happen it even continues to challenge the model of the climate well then it's not 97 percent certain is it if the antarctica which is one of the biggest land masses on our planet if they can't figure that out yet science is definitely not settled Bring you over to a video here, Antarctica gains greater than losses. It all centers around this cloud circulation pattern over Antarctica. Yet when you look at long term, 37 years since the satellite era began, 1979, far right, 2017. Do you see sea ice, anything out of the ordinary there? Is it so far out of the pattern? If it is, it's in 2015 with the above 16 million square kilometers of gain. That sticks out. Do you see anything on the lower 1 million, 2 million mark? No, nothing goes that low. And then the NASA article continues. The gains have exceeded the losses. And there's mass accumulation now. This is something I dug up looking for this research. A comparison from 1979 to 2013, a few years ago bit wider out here for you. October, which is going into summertime in the Southern Hemisphere. Also, one interesting thing, if you look at the expedition routes by explorers since the late 1800s, they all continue to go to that same base edge of where the ice is now. So it hasn't really shrunken like we've been led to believe through media sources. Looking at the global ice coverage here, I'll leave it up to you to look at the chart and ask yourself, does it look way out of the mean or way out of the average? A viewer of mine sent in a link to Aereo Farms farming locally, and they say on their website that they get 130 times more productivity than field farming in this vertical array with LED lighting and aeroponics. Not aquaponics. It's a mist that's generated and then it permeates through the root structures there, and then it's more easily absorbed because it's more uniformly distributed. What you see here, each tray is a different sprout that's being grown. One of the buildings that they put up and their system in play here, 
It's all running off LEDs, so it could be powered using solar panels. Wherever there's an area inside a building with access to electricity and water, this vertical tray grow system can be deployed. Even in hallways, as you see here, and when people always ask me, are we going to go to these type of agricultural systems? Absolutely, in my opinion, yes, we will, at least in part. So if you know how to assemble or repair or know how to build these arrays and set up, this is your currency. You can take your mind with you anywhere. And as our grow belts start shifting, our agriculture will also have to evolve. Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of the video. Please jump over to Food for Liberty slash Adapt 2030. Full heirloom vegetable kits for you to start your own gardens because you're going to have to get ready to start growing more of your own food during the Grand Solar Minimum.